Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music. It's no secret. I am a big fan of Steve Reich's music. There's a new Reich album out, Reich Richter, Richter the painter, amazing pattern images. And uh, listened to it the first day it was released. Got me very excited. Made me think of pan-diatonic modal exchange, which is a lot of word salad. What does it mean? It's actually pretty cool. <laughs> Take a look at the seven notes of the C major scale. That's a pan-diatonic grouping. If I want to change to a different scale, I'm going to spell some of those notes differently. For instance, in G major, F is sharp, so... In F major, B is flat, so... Well, I just love things that do exactly this in a kind of a musical way. For instance, here's a C triad, here's a D triad. Here I'm gonna do a little chunky chunk chunk in C. And then I'm gonna change it to the key of G just by changing the F to an F sharp. Here we go. It's cool sounding, right? Back to C. Well, you can imagine radical changes in key level with more than a couple of spelling changes can be a pretty complicated, but that's exactly what we're doing today. Let's look at a piece of music I wrote that um, really leverages this. I'll tell you what the chords are, we'll look at the scales, and we look at how it works. Well, something that Reich does is use um, kind of like jazz sounding chords, and that means weird modes, but it's okay, we know these things, we can study them, please study your scales. Um, some of this may not make sense unless you really know your scales, but here's the very simple four mode system that I used for this piece. The first set of notes that are right there are all members of the E flat Lydian scale. E flat, F, G, A, B flat, C, D. Sounds like this. And then the next chord is C Lydian flat seven. In other words, the E now has to become E natural. The F has to become F sharp. Listen to the change, it's really exciting. Now, if you look at this piano part, you can see that I just grabbed the notes and moved them to the appropriate locations. The thing that was E flat became E natural. The thing that was F became F sharp. That's gonna happen throughout. So the next chord um, or scale system is F major, just a very simple F major. And then the fourth one and the last one, it's just a four chord or four mode cycle is B minor major seven, which means B, C sharp, D, that's the minor third, E, F sharp, that's the fifth, G sharp, uh, it's like the ascending melodic minor, so the normal, the major sixth, A sharp, like the ascending melodic minor, the normal major seventh. The only thing that's different about it from the major scale is the third is minor. Well, you know what we gotta do? Let's listen to it roll by. There's some strings underneath supporting it. And then I added this ascending scale, and the scale, of course, is taken directly from the set of notes, of course. And then I added uh, some vibraphone because, you know, that's what he does. I'm gonna keep all those in. And now we have horns. Everything's pumping along, it's all there. A lot of notes at once.
This is what I mean when I say pan diatonic. All the notes at once. Pan diatonic. Everything. Pan across. Diatonic. All the scale. So I'm going to drop things out here. And uh, everything kind of drops down to, to just the horn. So here it comes. I love that moment. So we're just going to kind of look at everything now as it flows past. Once I settled on what I liked, I just laid it in or out. Density shifts are what I'm working with. Here comes one of my favorite moments, really just the scale. very much kind of a progressive electronica concept, right? Layer things in, build a giant stack of stuff you like, layer things in. Here come the horns and just the bass note. I'm going to say the chords and modes again as they go by. The first one is E flat Lydian, which is like the B flat major scale. B is flat, E is flat, the A gives it some spice. C Lydian flat seven, which is like the G ascending melodic minor, isn't it? It's the fourth mode of the ascending melodic minor. F sharp major, just a regular old major scale. And then when you get to the end, very last chord. Here we go. It's going to relax into B minor, B ascending melodic minor, and bye bye. Pan diatonic modal exchange. Grab a handful of notes, check out the spelling, decide on what the next mode or scale or chord, however you want to think about it, is going to be, and adjust each note so that it spells to that mode. When I was a kid, my mom made uh, cookies by putting them in a tube and squeezing them out through a nozzle. And that nozzle might have a round hole at the end or a star-shaped hole. It might be a cross. Depending on what it was, we get a different shaped cookie. And I'm thinking of the modal exchange as something like that. I love the concept of sort of staying in place or keeping something moving in the same pattern and adjusting, respelling each of the notes to accommodate the new scale. It's a fascinating sound. It's one that I love. It comes out of my appreciation of Reich's music, but of course, a lot of other people use this kind of thing too. And it's very much like what we do when we just blow over changes. We change the scale to fit the new mode. It's a basic skill. Learn your scales in order to be able to pull it off. But you don't have to do it in real time. It took me a while to write that. Like, I spent an hour and a half this morning kind of like, what am I going to do? How's it going to work? It was time well spent. Really enjoyed doing it, too. Well, I hope this was useful. Like and subscribe. Ding the bell. You'll be notified when I do my videos. I'll see you next time.